Hi guys, Mrs. Janako here. How you doing? I hope you had a good night. Good morning. It is Friday, my favorite day of the week. My favorite day of the week. It is my favorite day, my favorite day of the week. Woo! Here's our morning message. We're gonna do a little calendar. We're gonna do a little celebrating of somebody's birthday today. We'll do some singing, some songs, a really fun game, a story, and an activity. You ready? I'm ready, here we go. Good morning, bug experts. It is Friday, yay! We will learn more about bugs today. Stay tuned for a fun Friday activity after calendar. Do you notice that the chirping has stopped? Finally, yay! Say go, Big Frank. He changed the batteries. Actually, we tried to change the batteries and it kept chirping. And of course I thought, well, Mr. Frank, maybe you didn't do it right. So then I tried and I couldn't do it right either. Come to find out, apparently after seven years, you need a new smoke detector. I think ours is seven years old, so we have to go buy a new one and hopefully it won't chirp anymore. But it's done. You don't have to listen to it anymore. I don't have to listen to it anymore. Let's give it a boom. Boom! Our new power word is, drum roll please, has. It's also right down here in blue. Has is spelled H-A-S. Has. Say it with me. Has. Let's spell it. H-A-S. One more time. H-A-S. What's the word? Has. Nice job. Let's write it in the air. H-A-S. Let's write it on our hand. H-A-S. Let's write it on the floor. H-A-S. Let's write it on our arm. Want to try it? H-A-S. Want to write it on your forehead? Try it. It's going to be tricky because you might have to write it backwards. H. A S. That was a hard one. Has is a power word because you cannot really sound it out. That S at the end in the word sounds like a Z. If we were going to write the word has, maybe I should write it up here. If we were going to write the word has the way it sounds, we would spell it. As. We know that most of our power words are power words, and some people call them sight words because they don't always look the way that they're spelled and they don't always sound the way that they're spelled. Okay, so this is not how we spell the power word of the day. This is how we spell the power word of the day. Can you think of a sentence with this power word in it? I'm gonna try one first, that it'll be your turn. Let me think. Frankie has tons of balls. Can you try a sentence? Go ahead and share your sentence when you've thought of one. Nice job. I wrote my sentence on a whiteboard. I used lots of power words and I sounded out any words that I wasn't sure how to spell. I wrote Frankie has, there's our power word, tons of, another power word, balls. There's my sentence. I liked your sentence too. And I have to share Sorry guys, Mrs. Janeko has a new eraser thanks to the Potters. They left this in my mailbox because they saw that I had to erase my whiteboard with my hand in one of my lessons earlier this week and I actually almost just went to do it again and I thought, 
Bryson and his family left me an eraser, so I'm gonna you ah, look at that. My hand is still nice and clean. Oh, thank you, Potters. That was so nice of you. All right. There's that. Let's do some power word work. And I didn't even finish reading the message. Whew, I'm losing my mind. Here we go. Have a great day. We love you. Love your teachers. Here come the power words. Get ready. New word, has. Remember, you try to say it before I say it. That, can, with, in, me, live, to, it, this, what, here, where, See, one, my, have, we, all, are, like, little, why, Will, yes, can't, be, and, love, come, do, I, lots, look, is, the, was, go, a, of, at, for, get, no, said, she, Big, down, they, went, who, an, there, and one more time, that brand new word, has, H-A-S, has. Nice job. We just went through all of the power words that we know, so that was very good practice, especially for a Friday. I'm going to turn over to calendar so we can do some calendar work. Can you see this okay? Here we go. When I look at the calendar, I know that today it is Friday. So sorry for the mix-up with the day of the week yesterday. I told you guys I was having a rough time. <laughs> so, like I said, I know that it is Friday. Last Friday was Caden and Blake's birthday, so I know we can jump ahead a whole week. And today is Friday, April 24th, 2020. Say it after me, so you're going to echo me. Today is Friday. April 24th, 2020. Nice job. This time, can you say it with me? One, two, three. Today is Friday, April 24th, 2020. Good work. This time, I want you to say it by yourself. One, two, three. Today is Good job. Nice work. Whoa. Did you notice a cupcake? What do the cupcakes mean? Da -da -da. We have a birthday in our class tomorrow. Tomorrow is somebody's birthday. This somebody is a girl. This somebody has beautiful, 
long, dark black hair. This somebody has three letters in her name. This somebody is always sweet and kind. This somebody is best friends with Mason, along with many others. And she has two little sisters. Happy birthday, Luz. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Luz. She's going to be six tomorrow. If you would like to send Luz a birthday message or a birthday video of you singing happy birthday or saying something kind, feel free to do so on Seesaw and her mom can show her the videos. So, Luz will be six tomorrow. April 25th is her birthday. Woohoo! We know the season is spring. Today's weather is... Head to the window. I'll give you 10 seconds to check it out and report back. Go! All right, welcome back. What's the weather outside? Is it rainy? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? Is it snowy? Is it thunderstorms? Good work. Thanks, meteorologist. I know yesterday was Thursday. If yesterday was Thursday, that means today is And if today is Friday, tomorrow will be dun, 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 Saturday. If your family chooses to take breaks from listening to lessons, doing activities, anything like that, go for it. I'll probably take a break myself. Enjoy your family, enjoy your free time, and remember to be kind and helpful, even on those weekend days. Um, let's see, is there anything that I'm missing? You get a power words? Okay. I told you to stay tuned for a fun activity after calendar. Here is the activity. I love to play a game on Friday mornings in our classroom. Do you remember what that game is called? Hmm. It's something about a rug. And something about a, a, a bug, a bug and a rug. We play bug and a rug. We love playing bug and a rug. Here's your challenge. I want you to send a video to Seesaw playing bug and a rug with your family. Now, at first I thought to myself, Mrs. Janeco, how are they gonna play bug and a rug? Maybe there's only like three people in their family. If I played bug and a rug in my family, I think I would know who was missing if it was just me, Big Frank and Little Frankie. Why don't you try playing bug in a rug with your stuffed animals? So gather five or seven, maybe 10 stuffed animals and somebody else in your family. One person can leave the room while the other person hides one of the stuffed animals and you have to try to use your brain to figure out which stuffed animal is missing. You could even maybe ask for clues from the person you're playing with. Send me some videos. That sounds like it would be a fun game. Have fun, I miss you guys. Like always, I would do anything to be back in our classroom playing bug and a rug with you, and I hope we will soon. Stay tuned for a little read aloud about a bug story and a fun activity to come. Here we go. All right, I'm back, friends. We are going to read Bugs All Around. This book is by Natalie Lunas and Nancy White. Bugs all around. When you look at this front cover, do you think this is going to be a fiction or a non-fiction text? Remember, non-fiction means that it is real. You're going to see real pictures, real facts, real information. Fiction means it will be fake, made up, or a story that somebody dreamt up in their head. What do you think it'll be? Fiction or non-fiction? I think non-fiction. Just my prediction. We'll see. Oh, look, 
there's a contents or a table of contents. We used to talk about that together where you can see all the different things or topics that they cover and then the pages that you could jump right to. So if I wanted to jump right to observing bugs, I could go here, follow that little line, and I know that it starts on page six. All kinds of bugs. Beetles, butterflies, ants, and spiders. Most people call all these creepy crawly animals bugs. Where have you seen bugs? Go ahead and think out, think out loud or think in your head or tell somebody, where have you seen bugs? Usually we see bugs outside. Sometimes they come in our houses though, huh? Bugs are everywhere. You can find bugs in many places. They creep along in the stems of plants, buzz through the air, skim over water, and crawl on the ground. Describe each of these bugs. What colors, markings, and shapes do you see? How do you think these bugs move around? What clues can you find to help answer these questions? So take a look at these and describe each of them. Talk about some of the characteristics or the colors or the markings that you see. When I look at these pictures, I notice that this one is a ladybug. That's a bug I've seen before. I can tell it's a ladybug by that rounded shell. It's red color with black spots and those little legs. Up here, this is called a syrphid fly. It looks like its wings are moving very quickly and when they try to take a picture, they got all fuzzy. Down here is a water strider. It looks like they live in water based on its name and this picture here. They have long, thin legs. I wonder what those are for. And this guy, a green lynx spider, he kind of has some cool looking legs. They almost look a little bit prickly like a cactus. He also has some black dots on him. Observing bugs. You can observe bugs to find out where they live and what they do. The next time you go to a field, a park, or the woods, see what you can find out about bugs. This girl is looking at a praying mantis. To observe certain bugs, you have to look carefully. Describe the bugs that are hidden in these pictures. How does the way they look help them survive? Were you thinking that they were kind of camouflaging? That's what I was thinking. This bug I noticed makes its body the same shape as the thorns on this plant. That's probably an adaptation to help them survive, to keep them safe. It tricks their predators into thinking that it's just a thorn on a plant. This one down here looks like it does the same thing. It camouflages to blend into the sticks. Here it says just that. These bugs use color and shape to blend into their natural surroundings. This is called camouflage. That's that big word that you guys all know. What do bugs eat? You can watch bugs closely to see what they eat. Bugs eat a wide variety of foods. Grasshoppers eat grass and leaves. Butterflies sip nectar from flowers. So there's a grasshopper. There's a butterfly and a mosquito. What do you think this mosquito eats? How do you think it gets its food? What do you think? I do not like mosquitoes because they always bite me in the summertime and then I itch and itch and itch and itch. Why are they biting me? Have you ever gotten bitten by a mosquito? Why do they bite us? That makes me itch just thinking about it. Ugh. They get their food from us. It's disgusting. They suck our blood. Yuck. Classifying insects. Ooh, that's a big word. Classifying. Many bugs, notice they put those quotations around the word bugs, are insects. There may be millions of species or kinds of insects. Here are some you probably have seen. You've probably seen a firefly. You've definitely seen a honeybee. And you've probably definitely seen a housefly. It's just a fly that lives in houses. How to determine, that means figure out, if a bug is an insect. Remember, 
there's a couple rules that they have to follow in order to truly be an insect. Not every creepy crawly thing is really an insect. This says, count the legs. All adult insects have six legs. See if it has wings. If it does, it must be an insect. Look at the body. An insect has, three, has a three-part body, a head with two feelers or antenna, a middle section called the thorax, and a third section called the abdomen. Okay, so we have the head, the thorax, and this bigger part is called the abdomen, and that's kind of where all of its body parts live in there. Um, and then they have those two feelers off of their head, those antennae. Remember, they also have six legs and wings. Ooh, classifying spiders. What if you find that your bug is not an insect. It might be a spider, a member of the animal group called arachnids. Listen again to that word, arachnids. Can you say that? Arachnids. All spiders are actually in the group called arachnids. Here's a garden spider, a cave spider, and a wolf spider. Ooh, it's so creepy looking. How to determine if a bug is a spider? Again, count the legs. All spiders have eight legs, okay? Remember, we learned all insects have six legs. Spiders have eight legs. Does it have two body parts? The two parts of a spider's body are cephalothorax, cephalothorax, and an abdomen. Spiders do not have antennae, so they don't have those feelers to smell and sniff around. Comparing young insects. The bugs in these photos are insects. Why is this surprising? These bugs don't look like insects because they are larvae or young insects. Young insects are called larvae. Say that with me, larvae. Now it's not the beeping, now it's my computer making noise. <sighs> young insects are called larvae. Young insects look different from adults. In what ways will these larvae change? Here we have a moth larva. Ew. Down here we have ant larva. Ugh. This is butterfly, butterfly larva. Charlie sees lots of these because his family raises butterflies. Those are so pretty. Down here we have fly larva. And this is mosquito larva. Oh my golly, I feel itchy looking at all these. Ugh. Studying bugs. What types of bugs would you expect to find in this area? What do you think? Probably. Where would you look if you wanted to find a butterfly? If I wanted to fly, find a butterfly in this area, where would the best place to look be? Down in the deep, dark parts of this bush? Up here on the edge of this grass? Or maybe over here fluttering about the flowers. Yeah, I think they would most like to be fluttering around those nice bright flowers. What about a grasshopper? Would you find a grasshopper chilling on top of these flowers probably? Or maybe over here somewhere in the grass, deeper, closer to the ground? Yeah, that's what I think too. If you're careful and you ask an adult, you can capture a bug to study in detail. Make a temporary home for it. That means you're going to make a home for it for just a little while. Is it an insect, a spider, or a different kind of bug? Afterward, let your bug go in the place where you found it. Down here, it says make a chart like the one below to record your observations. So you can make a chart like this, or maybe I'll even take a picture and I can put it on Seesaw. You can record your observation to tell us how many body parts it has. If it has wings, how many wings it has, how many legs it has, how many antenna it has, and how many eyes it has. Then maybe we can try to figure out what it is. If you notice in this picture here, these boys made a temporary, or I'm sorry, these children made a temporary home for a bug by getting a jar that they could see through and putting a little tissue over it. My parents were always very, very um, sure to tell me that I had to have holes for air in the top of the bug jar so that the bug couldn't breathe. There's a big world of bugs to explore every day. What bugs will you discover? What would you like to know about them? How can you find out? How 
can you find out different things about bugs? You could observe them. That's right. You could find one and kind of keep track and investigate it, look at it, study it a little bit more deeply. You could also do some research, which, mean, which means you could read books about things. You could go online, the internet, and search for things. You could ask people questions, maybe, who are very knowledgeable about these topics. Here's a glossary of words. They kind of explain what these different words mean, in case you're not sure. Abdomen, antennae, antennae, arachnids, camouflage, cephalothorax, insect, larva, species, and thorax. This part says, think like a scientist. How can you tell whether a bug is an insect, a spider, or a different kind of animal? Do you remember? By how many legs it has. Remember, an insect has six legs, a spider has eight legs, and other bugs have a different number of legs. Some bugs have no legs, some bugs have lots of legs. Where can you find bugs? Can you think of two places where you might find bugs? Yeah, definitely. There's lots of places you could find bugs. What can you learn about bugs by observing them? Absolutely, you could learn lots of different things. You can also remember classify bugs by observing them to see about their body parts. I am going to add an activity for you to work on today about insects. It's going to look like this. I will ask you to label the insect down here are the body parts, the thorax, legs, antennae, abdomen, and head, okay? Now, the one thing is, you might be thinking, how am I supposed to cut and glue the labels in the correct box if I don't have the paper, Mrs. Janako? Well, my little loves, you can use the text feature on Seesaw to open a text box and you can type these words and then move the text box to where they belong. So you're going to label which part is the thorax, the legs, the antennae, the abdomen, and the head. Okay, remember insects have three body parts and six legs and those feelers that are called antennae or antennae. Have fun with this. I hope you enjoyed the bug song. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll have a writing activity for you too. Here is the classification of bugs chart. This is an optional activity. If you would like, you can go through and add different pictures of bugs that you know about to the correct column. The first one says six legs, those are insects. The next one says eight legs, arachnids, like spiders. I gave you an example there. And the last one says lots of legs. Those creepy crawlers that have tons and tons of legs, not just six or eight, are called myriapods. Can you say that with me? Myriapods. Draw some pictures in these boxes if you'd like and upload them to Seesaw. Can't wait to see what you come up with. You talk about its characteristics. Maybe you give it a name. So I drew a picture here of me and Frankie going on a walk on the sidewalk. There were some grass and trees around us, along with some clouds up in the sky. We came across this little black bug that had tons and tons and tons of legs. They were so little that I couldn't even count them. So I decided to write about that today. In my sentence, as I went to write, I was like, wow, I'm surprised by how many words I know how to spell because they're power words. It's so interesting that once you know many, many of those power words, your writing gets a lot easier too. So here it is. I saw a bug that had lots of little legs. I had to sound that word out. It is a myriapod. Myriapod. Notice how in this, in this writing piece, I used real life colors, lots of different ones, to show what was going on. In my writing sentence, I also used meatball spaces, capital letters where I needed them, punctuation at the end, and I tried my very best to spell those power words correctly, and I wrote down any sounds that I hear 
in words that I'm not sure of. Parents, remember, inventive spelling is what we're kind of looking for right now for those bigger words that they haven't really had too much interaction with. So even if it's spelled incorrectly, we like to see that they're using at least the first sound. And we've even taught them that if they know the word myriapod and all they hear in it is mm at the beginning, they are welcome to write mm and a magic line to tell us they know that there's more sounds there, but they're not exactly sure what it is. So we still are encouraging them to write those power words correctly, but unknown words, as long as they get that first sound and any other sounds that they hear there, we are happy with that. I hope to see some of your writing uploaded today or this weekend. And remember, it is Friday. So after you're done with this, we will catch up on Monday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Mwah. Great work this week, guys.